All right, so check this out. Um, I got a friend that was riding with his bike on top of his car and he ran it into the garage. Um, luckily for him, the, uh, I, don't, I don't know what kind of rack it was, but anyway, the bike slid back on the rack and one of the arms holding the bike frame came down and cracked the down tube. And you can see that here. Um, without removing all the paint, it's hard for me to tell if there's any other micro cracks on any of the tubes or lugs. And um, I told them that uh, you know if there is potential damage in these areas, that the the frame could be uh, potentially deadly. And uh, he's okay with that. So what he's asked me to do is go ahead and just repair this this part here. Now I'm not a professional um, carbon fiber frame repair man, so I don't have a lot of the tools that the professionals have, like an endoscope, which you would run down into the tubes and view cracks from the inside. There's also a thermal imaging. Uh, device that they can use which which ties uh, electrodes to the bike it runs an electrical current through um, the carbon fiber which is conductive and any crack that there is uh, heats up and they view that on a thermal imager so um, the other alternative is to remove all the paint and he didn't want to do that so what I'm going to do is I'm going to just going to repair this section here and see how it goes uh, the bike still feels pretty solid um, it doesn't feel crunchy in any other areas. I checked all over the frame, so pretty sure this is the only damage. Um, so anyway, I'm gonna I'm gonna tape off this part here, and then I'm going to uh, tape off probably down here somewhere. I'm gonna try to use acetone to get rid of the paint. If that doesn't work, then I'll have to sand it. But if I can do it without sanding, that's that's better because I don't want to ruin any of the uh, carbon fiber that's still good on there. So anyway, I will remove that and um, come back to it. All right, here's a good uh, look at this uh, this crack that he got in this down tube on this frame. Um, the acetone didn't work, so I had to sand this off. I just used 100 grit on an orbital sander to get it down. Um, this weave pattern that you can see, that's the first layer. Um, you can see a spot right here. So I can put this down. You can see a spot right here. Um, that's where I wore through the uh, the top layer, and you can see the unidirectional carbon fiber. It's just gray like that. Um, don't mistake that for gray paint if you've got it. So um, I sanded just a little bit too far. It's not gonna be a big deal because that's gonna get wrapped. Um, I also exposed enough of this area here where I can make a good solid repair. You wanna probably go at least two inches from the, the furthest point of your crack. So on this crack here, um, it goes to about right here. And then on the top, the, uh, the crack goes to about right here. Now I realize that uh, there might be a little bit more cracking underneath that I can't see, um, but I'm going to wrap this clear up into here just in case. So you're gonna want to at least go two inches, three. You know, the more you go, the more solid it's gonna be. Um, so anyway, keep that in mind. Um, now I mentioned that there might be a little micro cracking here. Um, when I sanded this off, it looked like it was just a little uh, tiny crack in the paint. Um, I don't see anything on the carbon fiber here. Uh, on the other side here, you can see this crack goes down to about here. So now what I need to do is figure out what the thickness of the, uh, the frame is. Um, and, and what I mean is the uh, thickness of the, uh, the tube wall. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a spot and just drill a little hole on one of these cracks so I can see about how much carbon fiber they're using. All right, I got my uh, my hole drilled here, and I just used an eighth inch drill bit. And it looks like uh, the tube's wall thickness here is about a 32nd of an inch, or uh, 0.75 millimeters. So I'm gonna try to match that, um, or make it even a little bit uh, thicker, um, the overlap here that we're gonna wrap around this tube. Uh, one thing to note on these tubes, they're using high modulus carbon fiber. Um, high modulus carbon fiber is stiffer, but weaker than standard modulus carbon fiber. Uh, it's also harder to find and it's more expensive if you're going to use it. Um, I'm doing this uh, repair as a favor, so I'm going to be using some standard modulus carbon fiber, which will be plenty strong for this repair. Um, just giving you an idea what I'm going to be using, I'm going to be using some unidirectional. This by itself is a 32nd of an inch thick. And so I'm going to be wrapping this so that the uh, major um, bundles run. Uh, the direction lengthwise of the of the down tube and then I'm going to be using this this is a four harness satin weave which is also a standard modulus this is uh, 6k 
uh, I believe it's 11 ounces per yard and I'm going to be using that to wrap the uh, unidirectional so that um, you know kind of a support around the uh, the unidirectional to, to help it from from splaying out so I'm gonna be using this and this and I'm gonna probably gonna be putting this on a 45 so it runs uh, 45 this way um, I mean, you can kind of see that they've done that here. They're probably using more uh, uni in this tube than than bidirectional. You can see the bidirectional on the outside. So, um, couldn't speak for the manufacturer on how they're doing this, but uh, but that's what I'm going to do here for the repair. I'm going to use the unidirectional going lengthwise along the tube, and then I'm going to be using the uh, bidirectional to wrap the uh, the uni. Um, before I can do that, though, I need to fill in uh, these holes because I'm going to be using a vacuum system. So. Um, any hole like this is going to you know, make it so that the vacuum has a hard time pulling um, adequately down on on the carbon fiber to get a nice uh, to get it nice and tight, and also wick out some of that excess epoxy so it doesn't weigh too much. So I'm going to go ahead and fill these in. Um, I will show you what I'm using for that here in just a second. All right, I don't have a cameraman, so bear with me today. Um, First thing I've got here is a measuring cup. You can use uh, these numbers here on the side. I've done it plenty of times with uh, with decent results with the epoxy. I'm going to be using this to, to mix uh, the epoxy with. Um, today I'm just going to be using some resin research. This is their 2100 system. And I'm using their, uh, their fast hardener. And so you have about a, it says 20 minute pot life, but really it's only about 10 minutes if it's warm like it is today. So um, we're going to have to work pretty fast on this. Um, I'm going to be using a scale here just because I don't want to mix up too much because the, the repair part that I'm doing right now is, is really small. Now the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to try to get uh, most of those cracks sealed. So I'm going to take this, uh, this frame here, I'm just going to use my glove and I'm going to try to just kind of move this around and get those in, that, in those cracks there. Just kind of move it around, squish this a little bit. Hopefully what this will do is uh, get the cracks that are kind of apart, kind of joined back together just a little bit, or at least uh, you know sealed a little bit so it makes it a little bit stronger when we put the, the other layers on. You get other people that say this makes no difference at all. It may not. So now I'm just taking a rag and wiping that off. This is just the excess epoxy that I got on there. Um, this will get another sand here in a minute. So now what I'm going to do is um, just take this uh, graphite powder. And I mix it in there with that uh, that epoxy. Okay, so that's about right. You can see there it's pretty stiff. That's what I want. Now I'm just going to use this to fill in those those holes and the cracks and stuff. Hopefully you can see this okay. Kind of move it in and out of those those cracks.
Okay, that's it. Um, you know, I made it uh, a little thicker. I'm gonna sand most of that off now. Um, I'm just gonna set this out in the sun. Um, it'll probably be ready to sand in a, probably an hour, maybe two. So, um, I will go ahead and sand it. I don't think you need to watch me sand it. Um, so I'll let this set up, sand it down, and then I'll then I'll update you. All right, so I let the uh, epoxy and graphite powder mix set up. Um, took about an hour and a half, two hours. Um, you know, so my mom got some lunch. And now I'm back. I went ahead and sanded it down. It didn't take very long to sand, but you can see here where the uh, graphite powder filled in. Let's see if you can see that better there. Oh, there you go. You can see it there on the top, on the side there. So all that's really doing, like I said earlier, is that's helping to keep the air from circulating um, from the inside of the tube up into my vacuum bag. And so um, just be careful not to squeeze on that or think that this is uh, structurally strong after adding that glue in there, because it's not. We have to add the uh, carbon fiber. So what I'm gonna do to, to get the carbon fiber ready is I'm gonna be using a prepreg. Um, a prepreg that I make myself. I'm going to use this piece of paper and I'm going to drop a template. Basically, I'm going to wrap this tube and um, you know, I got to account for the hole here. And I'm going to uh, wrap it and then cut it out in the shape that, uh, that I need the carbon fiber to be cut out in. So I will go ahead and do that real quick and then I will show you.